In this presentation, we are going to look at Maynard's rule and the rebirth of, of African nationalism. Maynard's rule and the rebirth of African na nationalism. The Boers, which are also referred to as Africans, lost the control of their territories in South Africa to the South Africa uh, to the British. With the defeat of the Boer by the British, and as well the total uh, conquest of the whole of South Africa by the British. Maina was appointed the governor of Transvaal and Orange Free States in 1902. Well, one of the earliest movement or, or one of the earliest move of Maina was to make sure British influence control is felt all, all, of, all over South Africa and this made him to bring in policies that were geared towards achieving this intentions well he requested or he demanded and as well encouraged the british citizens to migrate to south africa this was to increase the population of the english-speaking people and as well to reduce the african majority he also stepped up policy of anglicizing the boers through education Government schools were established in the African states of Transvaal and Orange Free State. The African language was allowed as a second language. And the language was only allowed to be taught two times in a week. While every other thing in the school or in schools or government schools were done with English language. In addition, MENA planned that the whole of South Africa should be united politically and economically. For example, he formed one custom union for the whole of South Africa and Southern Rhodesia, which is known today as Zimbabwe. MENA discovered that the sources of the economic policies depended on bringing the mines of Johannesburg to full production. For this, he encountered acute shortage of African workers. In order to fill up this, he approached the Portuguese and requested help from the Portuguese. Well, there was an agreement between him and the Portuguese in Zimbabwe. The Portuguese we are requested by Maynard to send African workers to them. Each, each African worker they sent to South Africa, we, the, the, the Portuguese were paid for, for them. But this didn't fill up the acute shortage of workers' problem. The, 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 the miner, in order to tackle this as well, looked towards the importation of cheap Chinese laborers. This was especially between 1904 and 1905. Miner's policies eventually failed. He was recalled in March 1905. However, the policies helped in rebuilding the nationalistic approach or tendencies within the Boers or the Africans. In reaction to this, the Africans first took the form of cultural and educational movement. To achieve this, they set up a society called Christian National Education or CNO. 
the main aim of this society was to collect funds for the Boers to, re to build schools where African education and culture will be taught. This was in opposition to the British educational system. The movement brought the different fact factions of the African together. It encouraged the national feelings within the Africans. However, the society, the CNO society, did not realize its other objectives. It was not able to generate sufficient funds in order to recruit enough good teachers. The movement continued, however, to champion the nationalistic feelings of the Africans or the Africanas. The Africanas soon realized that cultural association like the CNO would not realize their objectives. It was only political agitation they later realized was that was to be very helpful to them. To this effect, they started forming political units. They started forming political units in 1905. Louis Botha and Jan Smuts formed the Head Vault Party in Transvaal. The two persons were generals during the war they had with the British. So in the Orange River or the Orange States, Free States, the African formed another party which was called Orangia Union Party. Orangia Union Party. Its leader was M.T. Stein. He was supported by J.M.B. Wetzog and A. Fisker. In the Cape Colony, the African bond be uh, began to recover and its decline that was suffered earlier started phasing out. So, by the end of the day, the political intentions of the British suffered some losses, which as well helped towards the uh, resuscitation of the Boer nationalism or the Africaners nationalism. So the Boer and the other Africaners, we are of Dutch background. We've discussed it in one of our, uh, our, our videos early enough. They, we are one of the earliest Europeans to have visited South African uh, area and settled. So the British came and conquered them and established government over them. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell. So that any time we drop any content, any uh, content in African history, you'll be one of the earliest persons to be notified. Thanks for being part of today's uh, presentation.